Three Points of Articulation Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Points of Articulation Podcast. We're back once again with the WrestleFig Masters. Adam the Wrestling Man, how are you? I'm good. I'm good at listening to you rehash jokes. I'm pretty sure you've used that one before. I have, but um, it's sort of like a, a sub catchphrase. It wasn't a joke in a way. It was just a nice little... I tried the old three dudes with um, figure reviews, but it didn't really catch on. I don't think you two liked it. So, uh, Johnny, how are you? I like the T-shirt. says I'm positively awesome. It says on the back, but I can't be bothered to turn around. No. But it is an Edge and Christian T-shirt. You're forgiven for not turning around. Um, we're glad of it. Um, what have you boys been up to? Anything, anything fun in the last couple of weeks? FWL's in full swing, Adam, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. Brand new season, brand new leaderboard. Uh, interesting start so far, eh, Jamie? No, uh, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it started how I normally start, if not a little bit better than last time at least. So, um, to be honest, I, it's only early days. And as you know, I wasn't doing too well this time last year and then ended up winning by a country mile. So it's all possible for anyone to, to come back as well. Including you, Jamie. Including me. An inspirational quote and a half there. Um, but the Rumbles were all kicks off. And we got the 2002 Rumble uh, we're, we're looking at today. Um, just looking at the full match in the, the whole, really. It was a good event. A bit of nostalgia for me because I was 12 years old watching it. So I look forward to covering that too with you. But um, let's look at some news, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> News. News. Um, some lovely news. We've got a mixture of news. We've got so much news to cover. Um, let's start with AEW, shall we? Because they've, they've had a bumper couple of weeks, haven't they? Uh, AEW Unrivaled 8 uh, was come out. Was Chris, Latner, Chris Statlander. We'll start with first. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Um, Adam, this figure, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's toyetic as hell, isn't it? It's, it's really colourful, really nice. Uh, people will jump all over it, say how brilliant it is, until you start looking really closely at the figure. And then it does not look like Chris Statlander. Uh, it looks more like uh, Maria from WWE Past. Maria Canellis. But it's all right. Mm. Well... I didn't get a chance to study it as close as you did, so I'll have to take your word for that. But on my first view, and I thought it looked really good, like you said, very um, colourful, eye-catching, and it looked just like it, but I didn't look too closely. To be like that, the, um, the Hasbro review that we do, you know, I think people don't look too closely at the figure when they're rating them. <laughs> Maybe a bit of spoilers later to come. Um, but yeah, if you do look close into the figure, you'll realise that it looks exactly like Maria Canellis, um, exactly the same. It's almost like they've got a rehashed Maria figure and just pop some green tape on there, um, which is strange. But all in all, as you said, from afar, it looked good presenting, wasn't it? If you have no idea who Maria was, then lovely. Good figure. Um, if we look at Trent and Chuck now, um, Johnny, let's come to you on these two bad boys. Much like their tag team, one is much better than the other um, and is true to real life where Trent looks really good and Chuck looks really bad. Um, yeah, I think they've captured Trent's slightness very well and Chuck does not look as good as Trent. I'm going to do the old swerve on you, I think, uh, John. I think, I think I'll say the same, but the opposite way around. And I will say that neither of them look good. Because <laughs> they don't. Trent's head's too small and, and Chuck just looks ridiculous. Looks like um, Benson from Toy Story 4. Uh, yeah, I but I would have said like, in the, the Chris Tatlander, I only got a quick look at all of these, so I might have to, um, again, concede to Adam. But he has been wrong in the past about these things. Yeah, they're, they're both not great, to be honest. Um Chuck, he's, he's got a bland, weird face, and I don't think they're too far away from it. Trent, I don't know. There's something wrong about it. Uh, Jamie Jamie just said, obviously, his head's too small. I'll go back and have a look at that myself. I don't know. He looks old. His figure looks old. 
Looks like Jack Sparrow. Shapen. Um, with uh, what's he called? With yeah, with Trent. Did he have a um a Mattel figure? Yeah. Trent it was good. It was a it was a basic in a battle pack, but I don't think it looked anywhere like him. It wasn't very well done. Must mustn't have put any effort into it really. No, well, at least he's got form. Yes. If you say so. Um, it, it was quite poor. It was a battle pack with Mike Henry, I believe, for some strange oh, reason. He might have had one match with Mike Henry in the past, I think. Um, but for some reason, it came with that one. Um, I, I customised it and made a best friend's Trent with a beard on it. Uh, and it's it's not too far away when you add a beard with it. So the, the, the scan isn't as bad as you initially think it is on the battle pack one. But it, like you say, it's still not great. Um. Speaking of things that have just been look, look, look at customizers done them, Orange Cassidy is up next. Um, not much difference, just literally a different t shirt, maybe a beard. I think they've added to the figure as well. Uh, and they've got his, his arm pad seems to be the added thing in there. Um, it makes sense for the series because obviously he's coming with the best friends in Chris Statlander, but I think it's too early for a re release of, of literally the same figure. You know, Adam, what's sure. your? You? There's, there's nothing really to add. You've kind of covered it there. It's the same figure, just with a couple of tiny little alterations. There's no point to it, other than to get it in with best friends. And to be honest, there's still not really any point to that, because it's not like it's a six best friend pack or anything. So, a bit mm. pointless. Pointless in terms of maybe collectors, but good in terms of getting the product that people want on shelves. Like, kids are going to want an orange Cassidy, so... It's a fair re-release or repaint, whatever you want to call it. It's strange that it doesn't come with the hands in the pockets, although he doesn't tend to do it as much anymore, but it should have really come with those hands because they're quite... I'm not wanting to include a lot of hands or extra heads or anything, but someone like Orange Cassidy really needs it. Um, he's got one hand, hasn't he? One hand that can go in the pocket. Not two. <laughs> not two. strange. Um, Pain maker, Jericho. Is, uh, is up next. We discussed it when we first saw the figure. We're quite excited about it. It should be quite toyetic. Um, the jacket looks like it might be suffering the same thing that Series 1 Jericho had, where it's ridiculously hard to get on and off, but uh, it looks quite good on the whole. It's like a, a poor man's LOD jacket. Um, Johnny? I don't know what you're talking about. Being the Series 1 jacket hard to get off, I, I didn't find it hard to get on and off. Back on, back on is just a nightmare. Either way, back it didn't struggle with it, so oh, I did. <laughs> there was really no problem there. Um, you might be right on this new one, it might be more solid, hard to get on and off, but I suppose it's more of like a, a almost a, one of these one as a statue to pose in, in, in all of his um entrance gear as well. So, might not take it off really. It's one that really should work, and you kind of dreamed about when you saw Jericho in that attire but it's one that's just out a bit late for me uh, and the kind of the excitement has worn away a little bit of it and it just seems a bit cartoony and a bit meh for me uh, I think they've got out fairly quickly because what didn't you only use it for the Nick Gage match is that the only time he's used in AEW uh, yeah yeah so yeah, I mean they've got out pretty quickly to be fair to them so it wasn't an awful long time ago. But I see what Adam's saying. I even, agree even... with you there, but I, I thought he'd used it way before that, but I, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, yeah, he definitely used it in Japan and things, but I think he only used it once in AEW. I'm thinking that's what it's depicted here. I could be wrong. Well, I think the actual figure was released before the Nick Gage Jericho match, wasn't it? The actual figure was announced. I really don't know. There or thereabouts, anyway. So, um, yeah. Uh, I see what you mean, obviously. It is a bit late, because obviously the Jericho Paymaker gimmick was three years ago, four years ago, um, and it's used it for one match. But yeah, Maybe really... people let us know in the comments if mm. we're rubbish or not. Um, and he's also the Chase, uh, also the Rare, not the Chase, one of 3,000, uh, with a similar spiky, spiky jacket, and Floyd the Bat as well. Um, madam, any, <laughs> are we chasing this one? 
No, I mean, the chase actually, it actually looks quite good for a figure, to be honest. I don't really know what you're talking about. Um, I'm not I'm not massively up with AEW on that side of things. I don't even know who Floyd the bat is. It's a baseball um, bat called Floyd. Uh, no idea. Yeah, because, no one, right. because no one else in AEW has a baseball bat gimmick. No. I think he had it before Sting turned up, didn't he? Uh, All right. <laughs> no, Jericho invented the baseball bat. We know, we know. He did. Um, Moxley is the last one of the series um, John Moxley so the standard edition is, is Moxley in his long trousers doesn't come with an AEW belt so I think this is from his run a bit after he lost the belt sort of early to mid last year um, I would have thought we went, went a bit of a, a maniac run should we say um, Johnny what's your, what's your thoughts on Big John it looks like they're making improvement but it's still not there really it's better than the first two releases, at least. So heading in the right direction. Nothing to add. Slightly better. It's John Moxley. They've um, they've done him quite well with that body, haven't they? He uh, was around this sort of time. He planted a bit of timber, did our John, and um, they've still kept him with the uh, pecs and and the old six pack. So they've done him well there. He was too tall. And the other figures, I wondered if they maybe adjusted that a little bit. It would be good if he was slightly shorter this time. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, uh, with the what Pat was about now, the barbed wire blood and guts match with Kenny Omega and Moxley, scale wise, it looks like it's there because Moxley's a, a tad taller than Omega. So uh, it looks like scale wise, they might have, might have got it nailed on. Okay, getting ahead of yourself, but okay. Well, we're, we're there. We're, we're at that bit now. What we can talk about. What that. about the um, Cheers John Moxley first? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's just in his shorts, isn't he? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I mean, you, you see he's just in the shorts, but it's a massively different look. And I think it's probably one of those chases that people actually really, really want. So, uh, with it being so different to all of his other figures. Do yeah, you know not, think? Not for me. Um, yeah. I know what you mean. People, it's a completely different to what we've had before. There's no eye patch on it for a start. Um, so, yeah, that's what you mean, but it's just not... The figure doesn't make me want to go out and buy it or chase it. I can kind of see both sides there. We've got to say kudos to um, to Jazzwares for actually doing something a little bit different, like John was saying. But like Jamie's saying, do I want it? No. It, it represents his run in Japan, doesn't it? So that's why he wears in his Japan matches. So. Oh, well, these Japan unrivaled figures now, are they? That's well, the Just... forbidden door and all that. Mm. Close it. Not enough. No more forbidden door talk. It's boring. Um, yeah, so barbed wire. Um, Kenny Omega and John Moxley. Um, the set itself, the actual box, looks very reminiscent of the Cody one that we speak so highly of, where all the accessories, the majority of the accessories are on the side. Uh, it opens up out the back into the, the full uh, the stage um, for Revolution. So, um, really, really impressed with it, really. Sorry? They've knocked this one out of the park. I think they've made massive improvements since the last bloody version, in, you know, with the Dustin and Cody. Brett Baker. And, and, yeah. Um, I'm not really, I'm more about like a two pack in terms of a two pack like mm-hmm. that. It's much more better value. There's a lot of accessories, um, a lot of blood clothing. It all looks really, really neat. And uh, yeah, it folds up into a nice little stage as well, doesn't it? It does. it does. Sweet. Adam, do you find the blood cool? Um, no, that's, that's kind of a different question on me reviewing the figure. Um, as far as the setup wise, really impressed, really nice, really good. Um, it's it's a box display, but you can take it out of the box and make an equally good looking display um, with the revolution thing. Um, but you know, for, for me, I'm, I'm getting a bit bored because it's another one of AEW's trying to make a naturally created moment um, of which I have nothing but terrible memories of because it was crap. So, you know, it doesn't make me want to buy the figure. I think the match itself like was quite iconic. It was pretty brutal. Um, not sure that's for me, but, uh, as you know, some... Part of it, did enjoy. There was a good match up until the the end, unfortunately. 
Yeah, the end was um, famous, wasn't it? Everyone seems to poo pooed it and said that AEW was done, but they come back stronger, I think, off that. Um, especially Eddie Kingston. Uh, Darby Allen also has a ringside exclusive. It's a coffin drop ringside. It's a cheery old pack, isn't it? It's a, a coffin with a body bag and, and a load of accessories and stuff, which just a rehash Darby Allen figure, in my opinion. Uh, Adam. Yeah, it's 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 a bit rubbish, isn't it? Um, the coffin's a bit lame. Uh, it's just lame, to be honest. More than anything, this pack. Um, they have really good visually appealing exclusives to AEW. This one isn't one of them. Yeah, I, w- I wasn't sure myself, but maybe Adam sort of taught me around to think that it's more on the side of rubbish. So, in yeah. Just another derby, unfortunately. Nothing special about the actual figure. I think if you compare it to the other exclusives that they had and the other sets, like it's like the Jurassic Express, like the Bubbly set and all of the bigger sets that they've done, they all, in the box, look fantastic. If you look at the, the Jurassic Express set, it's just like a jungle and you open it up and it's two guys on the shoulder, the Bubbly set's the same. This isn't going to batter my crumpets, if I'm honest. It's just a coffin. No one's going to... It's weird. Not a fan. Um, that's it for AW. Um, on there, let's just end on that somber note for them. Um, well, apart from the micro brawler sting that we've had to release, the retro sort of was a late eighties sting, I guess you can you can say. Um, you got one, yeah, um, yeah. So you had it's a two week pre order that starts from the twelfth of January. So last week up until next week, which is the twenty sixth of January, and one out of a hundred you get a chase. Um, so they're making as many as, as they, people buy, really. Um, we discussed micro brawlers in the past, Adam. Do you like this? Yeah, way? we have. I, th- I think I think the words out of my mouth will pretty much be exactly the same. Um, it's a really good choice to do. It's really pops. It's really colourful. Both versions are really nice. Am I going to pay twenty dollars plus shipping for it? No. Am I going to pay ten dollars plus shipping for it? No. <laughs> it's a micro brawler. It, it's nice for what it is but it's cheap tat. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, maybe about a £10 posted level may get some interest over here, but when you're shipping from the USA, there's no chance it's worth that much. Um, I will say, I think I, I like the chase better than the normal one. Um, I'm very surprised that no one over here has picked these up um, as like a retailer for micro ballers because there is there is a market for it over here um surprised they haven't picked it up and just to save on postage rock and roll collectibles stay hold my beer oh, i'm not going to do that for them i'm not going to encourage drinking <laughs> um cheddar toys up next people who have a, a distribution uh distributor for in the uk um and british bulldog was announced which uh, to get on by surprise three different variants of the bulldog We'll talk about uh, the sort of the SummerSlam 92-esque one first. Um, Johnny, let's come to you on that one. I think the vital information you kind of missed off there is that there's going to be a fan vote to see which one gets made, so not all three are going to get made. I mean, this is according to the original story. That's, that's, that's not... They're all three are getting made. Let's... <laughs> well, I just want to give like, the, the factual information first, even though we've got our own theories of what might happen. But you're right. Um, some some good choices there. I, I do like what they've done. They're all very different, starting with the WCW about ninety three era, not SummerSlam ninety two. Daniel Bassett. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I like that one. It's got the gold tassels on. Makes it a, a bit different to what we've seen already from from many other figures of Bulldog. Um, next we had the long hair version. Certainly haven't seen any figures like that. I don't believe. Yeah, as far as I can remember. Is that from the Luger um, tag team? Yeah, it's Allied Powers, not Royal Rumble 1995, Daniel Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the Heart Foundation, which we've seen in, you know, Mattel made a, a cracking job of, of that, I think. And, yeah, if, if it's to me to choose, I'd probably go with the Allied Powers version. If I'm just getting one. I don't know. Is it definitely, definitely not the Rumble version? Yeah, he was shorts, like um, short 
tight. Yeah, he did. In the for some reason, I had it in my head. I mean, I've not seen these conversations that you're on about. Right. But I had it in my head that that was the Rumble version. And to be honest, that's the reason why I really liked it. <laughs> and that's just poo-pooed on all my thoughts here. Um, but yeah, all three of them are nice. And just just like you say, slightly different varieties of the Bulldog than we probably expected, which I like. You know, it shocked me a little bit what we were getting. Uh, I expected Bulldog from the British Bulldogs. Um, which is probably yeah. coming as well. Let's face that fact as well. They probably didn't want to include it in this because they knew it'd win because everyone would want it to go with the dynamite that's already out. Um, but yeah, really good from Chella again. Very good. I wouldn't be so sure if the, is the Bulldog Supac made that they wouldn't do a different colour scheme. If they've already released dynamite in the in the white, you may see them do the two pack in blue or, or red or something. Because they have re-released Dynamite as well, so there's going to be a lot of them floating around eventually. Probably. Um, for me, I'd, I'd say it's the, well, the one that I thought was 92 SummerSlam, but the WWE one, as you say. Um, You're embarrassing me, you two. What? It looks a lot similar. The sort of half red, half but I thought they might change it just for copyright and stuff. Well, the gold, the tassels on the boots it is quite a drastic change to the well, regular I, 92 I didn't, I didn't watch this WSW 93 I was three years old not watching it um, so yeah I just thought it was just a little homage to that it wasn't it wasn't uh, how about Gail Kim then um, she's had a figure made it's uh, exclusive to uh, Asylum Toys Toy Asylum whatever it is um Retro style for this sort of figure is a bit, a bit of a weird choice for me. I think she'd be better suited for their seven inch line that they're doing. But um, that's just my opinion, Adam. Well, even, even the pictures don't look retro style. They look like it's going to be like a normal seven inch figure, six, seven inch figure. Mm. Um, I'll be interested to see it in hand, this one, because even from looking at the images, I still can't picture it fully. I think it's going to be a bit weird to look at, if I'm being very honest, measurement wise. Uh, as far as what it comes with, coats, silver glasses or gold, whatever they are, uh, it looks like Gail Kim. Pretty good. As much as Gail Kim is a looker and you'd maybe want to look at it all day, this is just a figure I've got no sort of care about in the world. I wasn't watching wrestling this time. I don't think it fits in with a retro line. I don't really care if it gets made in the seven inch line, which I think they have announced that is going to happen. Um yeah, just just not for me. It's just a time where I wasn't wasn't watching. So I don't yeah. know much about Gail. So the seven inch one makes complete sense. The the retro style doesn't. Um it looks more like a um sort of an unmatch fury or a was it the fatal four way line they did um for a bit. So yeah, just not necessary in the retro line. But um, yeah, apart from that, she is an attractive lady. Um, Greg Valentine was up next in his Rhythm and Blues outfit. Everyone went mental for this song when it came out. Um, very surprising that they've, they've pulled the trigger on this, but yeah, equally should be quite good. A bit toyetic as well, Johnny. Well, I reckon this is going to be a time where Adam says the exact opposite of what I do. So I'll just go for it anyway. I'll say, what a fantastic choice. Uh, the figure looks like it could be really good. It will go straight into that Hasbro era. It's sort of like a figure that never was. Um, I think they've absolutely made a blinding sign in here. And they can pull it off and it looks good. It's a winner. Do you know, I'm not. I'm not going to say the opposite. Um, when it when I first saw it, I'm not. I'm not a rhythm and blues fan. Rhythm and blues are not for me. They're not really an important part of WWF history, in my opinion. Um, but they are an important part of toy history. Um, obviously, we know Valentine had the the unreleased prototype, which is it up to four now. I think have uh, been found, um, or four fakes, whatever. Um, but, you know, it was really needed for the toy community. It is really needed to go with the Honky Tonk Man figure. It's created a buzz unlike any, I would say, that Chella have done so far. 
even though they're doing so well, this one has definitely got the most buzz about it. it it's a cracking looking figure. It's not for me at all, but it's a great choice and a good looking figure. Um, they haven't got the action the same as what the Rhythm and Blues Greg had, which is one thing I will point out. Is it had the clothesline action compared to this, which is more of a so what you actually call this a double hand grip one. Um, there's any, diff, any difference you can really see from it. A bit more colourful as well on the jacket, but uh, I think it's definitely needed. I think it fits into the Hasbro world. It makes sense if you're going to do a retro style to do one that the line's missing, um, like the Bundy from Zombie Sailors, like this, and like a few others that we've seen, not the Gail Kim. Yeah, as you said about the action, it matches exactly with Honky Tonk Man now, although there is an action, but we know the stance yeah. poor. Um, yeah, I think they've done well not to do it exactly the same. Um, and sticking with Chala, the bone crunching wrestlers, we saw the official figure images of Adam Bomb and Blue Meanie, as well as the packaging for Blue Meanie as well. Um, for me, the figures look too clean, is what I would say. They're not as rugged or as rough and ready as the as the BCAs of past. Um, they look a bit too well done, should we say, but um, that could be where they're going style-wise over the traditional sort of crapper-looking VCAs. Yeah, I'll kind of take your opinion on it because you know a lot more about BCAs than me. Uh, just on first glance, if we talk about Meanie and Adam Bomb, the blue yeah. Meanie looks cracking, but it's a very cartoony type figure with an easy face because of the makeup and stuff. Um, but it looks really good, and it looks really good in box as well. I can understand what you mean about being too clean, um, but, you know, I don't necessarily share that same argument because I don't really care uh, about BCAs, to be honest. There's something wrong with Adam Bomb. I still haven't put my finger on it yet. It should get my attention. It should make me want it, even though it is a BCA. It doesn't. I'll, I'll agree with you completely with the, the Blue Mini, so it's not your retread that ground. Adam Bomb, also agree with you in terms of not knowing what's wrong with it. Um, one thing I do think's wrong with it is the tan. It's way too tan for, even even for Adam Bomb, it's like a Hogan-style colour, and even Hulk Hogan doesn't have that, and Mattel figures or, you know, that sort of thing. So it's going to look completely out of place, not just amongst PCs, but amongst any figure line. Because there's been like a sort of standard that's already been set where we're not really including tans on figures too much. So yeah. there was a, there was an Ultimate Warrior, wasn't there, in series one of BCA, which was ridiculous as well. Yeah, in series, yeah. series series two. Um yeah, and hardcore Holly, his first the job squad one was also ridiculously tanned compared to the rest. Oh. So certain figures just are a bit off colour. Now Venus was like a weird shade of grey as well. Um so yeah, some certain figures are different colours, but Adam Bob is yeah, nowhere near nowhere near that colour. Yeah, so I know they're doing a running change on the legs, which has um, halted the pre-order on that. So mm -hmm. the pre-order for the main is going ahead, but the Adam Bomb's been delayed because they're fixing the legs, which I didn't really understand myself. I, I, Jamie might know a bit better than me in terms so, of what that was. So the but legs... if they do a running change, what if you're listening? Sorry, just <laughs> one more second. Have a look at that skin tone before you um, finalise it. Well, the good thing is they, they listened to people when they said about the blue meanie uh, logo being yeah. too purple. They've changed that and it's now a bit more blue. The legs of Adam Bomb, they've put it outwards. Um, whereas you do get that with some BCAs, but people wanted the legs pointed inwards, which you get with the better BCAs. So they've done a running change to swap the outer pointed legs to the, the inner pointed legs. Right. Okay. So it's just well, more about what people might want rather than accuracy. Um, well, no, it's because when you're doing a kick with a figure to set up a power bomb um, or something, or, or the meltdown, or whatever you want to do, um, you want to lift your leg up and then it goes inwards to kick the person. Whereas at the moment, it goes outwards with the, the sole of them kicking. It doesn't really make any sense. So uh, it is a bit of accuracy, and it is what the people want because of the accuracy. I wondered why I kept missing at wrestling training, just kept going to the side of <laughs> people. <laughs> In slip. That um, kick's surprisingly harder than it looks. Uh, we also had the Undertaker revealed as a WWE now. Um, it was sort of got the SummerSlam ring so exclusive backwards. Uh, Johnny pointed out something earlier. Um, 
about the box and the figure. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've made a big deal about this being the first release of the 2001 WCW tag belt. And then on the back of the, the, the package, all they show is Undertaker holding the WWF Tag Team Championship in one hand. He does have the WCW in another hand, but you can't see it. Kane's behind him holding it clearly a WWF title. There's just no shots of that WCW title in the box at all. So not, not that I care, but I know Adam has sort of gripes about these things on, on boxes not being too accurate. It's just a dumb thing to do if they made a big deal about the WCW tag belt and not put it on the, the picture that they use. It does yeah, look better yeah. than when I first seen it, though. You're exactly right. It is a dumb thing to do. Um, I point out every week in kind of Hasbro uh, when we're talking about those, and th this one's just the same. There's just no reason not to be showing him holding a WCW title with the amount of photos they could have picked from. Uh, as far as the figure, there's something wrong with the head for me. I don't know if the forehead's too enlarged. Uh, something not quite right about the head. It's still a nice-looking figure, don't get me wrong. I'm not sure the belt's perfect. I haven't had a proper good close-up look, but it, it doesn't look great. I didn't look either. I should have sent you earlier then, shouldn't I? Um, the I think, I think the head scan on Taker, I think they've used like a, a sort of a modern day Taker head, but they've painted over it with the previous 2001 colours. They seem um, to do that a lot. Didn't they do that with the Ultimate Edition as well, with the, the Ministry 1998? They had like the, the face of an old man Undertaker with the hair yeah. of a 1998 Undertaker. And I haven't got it yet, so I, I can't really comment, but daft thing to do, really. Prop my daft. Um, but yeah, that seems to be the, the general gist of, of this figure, just throwing it together just to get a, uh, a Taker release out there for some reason uh, with the belt. Um, the belts are the main focal point on it. The straps come down, which I quite like, but I would have preferred if they debuted that with a cat angle or something from uh, around the same era. You're right. Um, they, they could have released any another figure with this, or they just put it in a normal elite line. Nothing screams anything special about it. It shouldn't really be ringside exclusive. I do like the SummerSlam logo box. I think that looks quite attractive on the old eyes. They could have just done that, like, do you know, when they do a SummerSlam series every year, they maybe could have released that as part of it. The old dioramas in the background that they used to do for the uh, the Red Box elites. Oh, God, they were the worst. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> and, um, the boiler room one, and they had, like, the Scott, uh, the, the um, one with all the image, the Schamberger pictures on the background. It was um, pretty much the topic of our first podcast, wasn't it? The, the idle hands and the idle... Mm. dioramas that were crap that came with um, figures that nobody wanted hey it got a lot of people into shamburgers who quickly uh, quickly sold it after after a week or so I don't think that was the catalyst no <laughs> uh, but yeah let's, let's move to some pick me ups uh, in a second to see which previous news we've bought this time round uh, actually let's just do it now shall we Pick me ups time now, and we're looking into all of our latest pickups since the last episode of the podcast. Johnny, you got more money than us. How far across to you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even argue that because my first purchase of the week is a new replica belt. Oh yeah, and the classic WWF tag team title. Now I did have this before, but it's a bit banged up, so. Sold that on and and got myself a, a new one. Got the old, the, the sorry, the new legend sort of logo on with the, the WW with no F, but really is something that doesn't bother me at all. I live in the real world. I know the car make merchandise that I knew of, and I think it's awesome. Is that the belt that Taker was on display on the back of his 2001 SummerSlam box? It's not actually, because this is more the you know, 1980s version of this belt. I, I've got the other one a few weeks ago, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I've got two two tag team titles, but one but dual plate. This one is dual plate. The other one is all gold. A lot of, um, lot of reflection. Yes, it's a lovely belt. That's yeah. my, my, my review for the belt. <laughs> <laughs> do they do that one in the silver as well? 
Yeah, this is the, the dual plated one, the silver one. Oh, oh, you can tell now. It just looked really yeah. gold when it was on your shoulder. You can see all the Johnny's classic superstars in the reflection. If you ever want a mirror image in my room, this is the time to have a look. <laughs> mini belts. Yeah, mini belts. Someone tied up in the corner. <laughs> it's the person whose house it really is. <laughs> He's back <laughs> again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the first one of the week. I don't know, of course, to you. Yeah, I'm going to start with some tees, I think. Uh, it was actually a couple of T-shirts that I forgot to show last time. And when I say I forgot to show, I mean I wore the two consecutive days before the pod. So mm -hmm. they were in the watch when it came around to the pod. Uh, so a couple of Christmas gifts that I got. Uh, first one is very Hasbro-related. Uh my girlfriend's family does a secret Santa every year, and my secret Santa got me this this year. Knocked it out of the park. I think you'll agree. Yeah, it's a it's a lovely gift. I think that you've shown me that before somewhere somehow, and I think they've done a really good job of picking something good for you. Yeah, I was very impressed. No special. Was expecting as... a box of chocolates. The same as my phone case. I've got the same on there. It's a wonderful. I love it. Um, very good as a t-shirt um, I think they've done very well for you there yes I'd take uh, that the other, over one, a bit. the other one is the new Enfield Town football kit uh, the reason that that is wrestling related <laughs> is they are sponsored by NXT UK uh, which is the logo in the middle uh, it's actually quite a nice kit I don't know anything about Enfield Town I've got to be honest um, but, you know, it is wrestling related and something that I just wanted to pick up for kind of, I think it'll have a bit of future niceness. I can't see NXT UK lasting too much longer, to be honest, uh, but it's one of my favourite brands. So anything to do with NXT UK, I want. Yeah, you, um, something that... Sorry. Also, what, did you get? What, what did you get? Oh, the chairs and whilst we got it from. Those were just, that was that a sentence, words, uh, just just mumbled. <laughs> I said, where did you get it from? Where did I get it from? Because yeah. uh, it was a Christmas present, so I don't know. Oh, right, sorry. That was a wasted question. Um, yeah, this this has something that could have potential of value in the future. It, it's a hard one to tell, but it might do, because it's such a like a niche product of something that's wrestling related. So, uh, yeah. Interesting part of that one. It's fun as well. We quite like it. We should be, become a big Enfield fan. Might do. Go into all the games. Um, Johnny, let's pop over back to you, should we? Already. So soon. I know, Nothing yeah. for you. Well, we haven't got... Right, uh, we're sharing, aren't we? So. I'll go from replica belts to mini belts. So I picked up a few more mini belts. The first of which is the classic Intercontinental Championship. Again, with the, the block logo on, not the WWF. I also have the WWF, but I'm trying to sell that at an extraordinary price because I'd rather have the money for it than have a logo. Uh, second is the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, so no WWE logo on that. And third is the Blue Undisputed Championship. Universal. I wasn't sure if I had that one. Every time I order from um, Euroshop about like mini belts, I have to come down and check which ones I do actually have because I only order the same things again and again. And I did also pick up this um, Undertaker signature belt. It comes in the coffin, much like the Derby Allen. Undertaker 30 years of. A bit more attractive. Yeah, it's a proper solid case as well. And it was only like 30 quid. Like, it wasn't dear at all it's been reduced quite heavily from 90 pounds and there it is in the box like a oh, winged eagle type just try not to get the glare it looks like a bat i sort of take it out so it's a it's a player on the winged eagle but a silver plate nice that no great great sort of strap and yeah, looks a bit batty, like you say. A bit batty. A bit batty. And the yeah. leather's a lot like, better than normal that they use on mini belts, so a bit more premium. But I got it from a normal price. 
I still don't know how I feel about belts that aren't really belts. I agree. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I'm exactly the same. The only reason I picked this up is because it's quite cheap. So I wouldn't have got it otherwise. And I'm kind of trying to stay away from that sort of thing. I'm trying to sell my signature belts. And yeah, but this was just too cheap to to pass up this time, I think. Aye, that makes sense. Um, I did get a lot of other stuff from Euroshop, but yeah, it's not worth talking about. This Edge and Christian t shirt is one of them. Did you not get a Fiend mini belt? Because that was ridiculously cheap. I already, I already had it, yeah. I've already yeah. had that one. Um, it was like 16 quid or so, wasn't it? Was... Adam. Yeah, very cheap. Cool. So, uh, my next pickup, um, and this one's going to surprise you massively, is from Euroshop. Uh, I saw some things that it was quite cheap, and it just oh. so happens to be a uh, Bray Wyatt mini belt. Uh, yeah, so talking about belts that aren't really belts, you know, uh, but at least this one was in the actual show. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I actually didn't realize it would come in that, which is probably the best bit about it, to be honest, uh, is the case for it. A really enjoyable case. Uh, it, it's slightly better than I thought it was. It's got some features that uh, I didn't really expect, such as the uh, the belt buckles and things like that. It's all right for what it is. For 16 quid, I wasn't not going to get it. Yeah, the, the, about the belt pads, they've really improved in how they present them. They usually just had like the WWE logo on, and sometimes they didn't have the belt, which, you know, what, what it was inside it. But now they have pictures and all sorts of really sort of made an effort with that and then they go and sell everything for half price so I don't really know what's going on in terms of their business with replicas and mini belts because they're just reducing them all the time and the market is dying Seems well, I think obviously the Bray Wyatt one was because it's been released isn't it which is always mad which is yeah reduced but that was clearance mean? but pretty much everything at the moment and this is as of time recording is 50% off Including like a lot of recently released replicas and, and things like that. So it's almost like they're trying to get a lot of cash quickly, isn't it? Just to make the books look a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. Um, well, I'll do my first then. Uh, I think me and you have got a, uh, a joint one this week, Johnny. Uh, Joey Knight. I've got the uh, lovely green Joey arrived. Um, we've got a signed version. Which we uh, got there, and we also got a second green version for the FWL. One of the prizes Joey was not kind enough to, uh, to give in. So, thank you very much. Two greens. Um, I was due a purple one. Uh, Joey accidentally sent me another pink, so he is sending me a purple one on the way. But good news is we can. Uh, Use this for a giveaway, so uh, I'll write a full description of it on the Facebook page, but just leave a comment in the YouTube, what it's going to be, leave a comment in the YouTube section to be entered for this, but look out for our Facebook for the uh, the full giveaway code, yeah. description, info, details, details, so yeah. Yeah, check out the Facebook for that. Um, yeah, I've got the join eggs as well, I've got one signed and got this one, uh, just didn't same figure, green attire. He's done well to get three figures out of himself, and I'm sure anyone would be very proud of that. One thing I can say is like these cello figures are coming quite um, banged up. I noticed there's a um, a lot of them have fell off the bubble that we've seen in groups. This one's got a hole in the plastic, and there's a lot of dents here in this area where they've been packed. Oh, yeah. I think it's due to the well, if you feel where the nose is, it's really quite hard and quite sharp. So if that's laying against the card on the other side, it's going to make it a, a dented. Same as the Born and Carno. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding that quite a lot with a lot of the cello figures, which is, I mean, I'm not super anal about the condition of packaging, but it's going to put off a lot of... Um, soft smiling, Jamie. It's going to put off a lot of people already who, who collect mint on card. Yeah, um, but I mean, all in all, as you said, one thing that would probably annoy Adam would be that the green and the purple don't match the backing card. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. The, the pink does absolutely look the best just because of the pink oh, yeah. packaging and the pink attire that Joy's wearing in the picture. It's shame and, that he couldn't. Ooh, I was going to say Andy wore this for the film that he was in. Yeah, I was just a shame that he couldn't like sort of make a green packaging for this one with his wearing his green top. It would have yeah. made it look much better. Same with the purple. But I imagine probably would have been a soft, soft tissue, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I imagine they weren't yeah, cheap. Well he's, he's sold out now, so... He is. This, he's done. He's, he's and hopefully made a bit of money from that as well, so... And it was sold out, but... Um, it's, yeah, unless you want to pay 75 quid for it on that website that we saw. Um, yeah. Absolute madman. Um, yeah, a lot of purple in the post, and one of 100, so... Adam, are we good to me? That's you. Uh, another another Euroshop one then. Uh, my favourite wrestler in the WWE, you guys know, was released uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was Danny Birch, and I saw these at the half slash quarter price sale, and I just thought I got to get it. It's not something that I get often, but it's the side plates of Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch from their NXT tag team title run um, and if I can get the light right oh, quite uh, nice. inside. Um, one of the better plates I think a lot of people just simply get their name written in a different font uh, whereas this matches the t-shirts that they were it's actually a link to them and their personality and their tag team run um, so I think I might I think Although it's not the most toyetic figure in the world, I think I'm going to get some customs made, some like proper good customs of Birch and Lorcan. Uh, see if I can get them done, t-shirted up and everything, uh, and get a little display going with them. Really, really nice, actually. It's something that I'd like to get into because they are quite nice, but I probably won't because there's too many and a lot of them are pretty lame. Yeah, if you want to talk die markets, the, the side player to... It's even worse than the mini belts or the replicas. They're just not selling. It doesn't seem they're always half or quarter price, like you said. And if you are a big fan of someone like you are with Danny Birch, it, it was a no-brainer to buy those for, what was it, about 20 quid? Yeah, was, 22 uh, quid. Awesome. Absolute stale because they are £90 retail price, you know, a, a full price. So it's a, it's a massive discount. And you know, if, if, I, if I think the, the Bret Hart ones for about that price, I might pick them up as well. If but, I was Danny Burke, I'd try to pick them about 15 of them, 20 of them, and just signed them and flogged them on for a, a tiny yeah. fee. Um, that was a good idea. Um, George, we come to you or yeah. back to me? Yeah, that's me. Um, let's go on, let's do WWE first. So, one figure I'm sort of am and are about getting, I eventually pulled the trigger on was the John Cena Legends figure. Quite liked it, quite the look of the figure. I thought it was quite fun. Um, I like the debut Cena, as well as the WrestleMania 36 head. So um, I quite like this one. I quite like an early, well, like the Decade of Domination Orton as well from 2002, because 2002 was my favourite year for wrestling. So um, I'm trying to get a little collection of those. Yeah, fair enough. If, if that's your favourite year... In um, WWE, then it's a good figure to pick up for you. It's not a bad figure, it's just like it's, it's one of them that you don't, well, most people would have thought they really needed. Yeah, it'd be a nice little collection to get kind of the really young models, like you say, with Orton and Batista, Les Lesnar, and people like that. Lesnar, yeah, and, yeah. Um, Edge. Um, yeah, that's the plan. So, see, it's picking up just as many people from year 2002 as possible so I think Lita's Lita's one well, that was probably a bit early for the Lita's one wasn't it but Jeff Hardy's got one for example and stuff so um, yeah we get to get a little collection on the go from my favourite year of wrestling yeah the, the Lita is around that area they're certainly the, the first one that was released so mm. why not yes Indeed. Um, uh, also I to go with that sorry I've um, also got a uh, The Rock Says book which I thought it was quite a fun little thing, so I have a little read of that. When you say to go with that, is there a link there? They're both <laughs> WWE. All oh, right. <laughs> WWE section. Yeah. And I think I read that before. 
Um, is it an old one, like 1999 or something? 2000? Yeah, was, this was the one that his first, his first one. Um, it, I mean, an extract for it was for him. It had been decided, no. though. <laughs> Carry on, then. Yeah, I think I rented that for my library back in the day. To be fair, it looks like quite a good book. Like normally, I don't really pick up the new books because they're quite like scripted and like ghost written and stuff. But um, like quite a fun book, and I quite like. I remember this era when this book came out. So this when the rock was on top of his game. He had this. He had the VHS and stuff as well, which was quite fun. So um, yeah, the first few books were good, good reads. Mm. Sweet. Uh, we're back um, to you. Yeah. So. I'll, um, I would say we were going to stick with Legends, but you went off on a tangent with books. But hey, yeah, I'll pick up some of the Elite Legends series. And starting off with Kevin Nash, which I missed out when I um, got the series which he was in. So I've got completed that series now. And great Nash figure. I think the, the hands are really cool on it as well. He's doing the Wolfpack. Nice T-shirt of him, him and Scott Hall. I don't think it matches the Scott Hall that was in the series before, but... I think that's a bit earlier, that one, I'd say. Big. Yeah, I'd say this is like an early Nash where the hall was quite a uh, late one ninety nine mm. or something. And on to the next series of um, Legends, I picked up the Jake Snake in the blue. So that's 1991, 92, early 92. Did what time Do we in the Rumble? Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, something like that, which was, I could remember. It was, it, was around, podcast, it was around his feud with Macho Man, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's so it's that era of Jake. He switched it up from black to blue now and again. Good figure, but it's hard to pose with, with this, the stupid snake because it's too hard. I mean, it doesn't fit on his glove for whatever reason. And, of course, this version of Jake comes with a chase. I believe it is a WCW version of Jake Robertson. It's probably not the best one in terms of the decoration, but it's, um, I remember being quite, one of his only appearances in WCW, so, so why not? There he is, grey outfit. And um, Adam was talking about a figure the other day, and I had one up my sleeve. It is Cowboy Bob Orton with the boxing gloves. And I did say only like all is like this just to throw it off the same, but it is absolutely smashing figure. In fact, it's probably I would say it's really good. The face is really well done. I'm struggling with light here today, aren't I? Um <laughs> just trying to get them pictured. But yeah, really good figure. And with boxing gloves, the removable cast as well. So it's not just painted on like the last one. Yeah, Mattel, Mattel had to do something with that figure. Um, because he's a boring wrestler that nobody cares about anymore. Um, and they have done something to be fair, and it lo- looks really good. Yep. So that's it from Legends Corner. Adam. Uh, yeah, my last one. Uh, apart from this beautiful the way T-shirt, um, broke up way too soon. Could have been a great group. Uh, is another Euro Shop uh, bargain. Let's say uh, I had a belt just sitting not in my display, uh, and I saw this and I thought, ooh, that would be interesting. Uh, it was only about 16 quid, and it would display the belt quite nice. <laughs> Which is the ECW display. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks visually very good. Um, it is what it is, but... If you wanted something that's going to last and something that um, won't take a beating, do not buy this um, because this is a piece of cardboard with a flimsy bit of plastic around it. And I would say that the the deluxe model is probably the same, but the flimsy bit of plastic is a bit bigger uh, around it. It is literally a bit of cardboard. I could have made this myself for about two quid. Uh, so, but you know, it's sixteen quid. Uh, the, it's got Velcro on the on the base or Velcro look to it. It's a tiny little uh, film of something resembling Velcro. Let's just say, I've, I'm getting the wrong word with Velcro there. What am I meaning? Velvet. That's what I'm yeah, meaning. 
right? Yeah, I, I was um, eyeing up a WCW one of them this week and I was checking out the specs and I just read exactly what you were describing. I thought there's no way that's going to be any good because I, I wanted to maybe try and display the Galoobs on, but I just don't think it would work. So I decided against it and I'm glad I did. Um, yeah, I think that the 16 quid, I think you can spend more than that, can you? But it's, yeah, didn't look that I good. I would have been gutted if I'd have spent the 40 odd quid that it's supposed to be. Oh, you would have been sick, wouldn't you? And sick in your own mouth. Um, <laughs> back a bit. Uh, AW, let's skip across to that because I've got quite a few pickups this week. Um, I think Pop Shop did a probably the most interesting thing I've seen from a shop in a while. They brought out the box where they had one of where well, 45 figures, boxes labeled one to 45. You go to the website, you pick up, yeah, you pick up the um, the box number that you want. They've already boxed them up and already numbered them, so there's no cheating. They just ship them out to you, and you get a random figure based on the number that you picked, which um, I thought was really good. Let's get involved. Uh, Johnny, I understand you got involved as well. I did. It's coming up. Um, I got a Jake Hager figure um, on there, um, which is awkwardly I did pick up loose uh, only a few mere days before, but um, decent figure. Um, no, not bothered about having it in, on, in the box and loose, to be honest. It's quite nice. So you kind of skipped over the good part about um, what made it so appealing, though, Jamie. Um, um, what, what what could you have won? So what you could have won for <laughs> really cut off. <laughs> um, so the main prize would have been the Matt Hardy Chase figure, um, which was the main, which one of the boxes contained. You also had the uh, Jungle Jurassic Express two pack in one of the boxes. Uh, you got the SCU two pack. You got the Mox and Derby two pack. And the Jericho um, accessories uh, jacket pack as well in there. So uh, a good variety of, of things that you could get. But the Matt Hardy chase figure was um, the main prize, which uh, I had a really good feeling about box 12. For some reason, I bought box 34. Don't know why. I tried to buy that one. 34? <laughs> yeah, I, I went on, like, as soon as it was announced, and I was like, three dolly, and then I forgot about it. Then I went back later and then I, I went and got some. So I guess I'm pleased I didn't get 34 after all. Then. Yeah, did, did you get box 12? or? I didn't get box 12, no. Um, so, Adam, is that it from you? So, yeah, oh, well, I've, I've still got my more AW figures. So it's wrong for all right, go, go ahead then. I've got the Cody LJN. Which, um, How is it? You know what? It's terrible, but <laughs> the actual box itself, the box pops quite well. Um, it, stand, it, it stands. Even, it even looks really bad from this far away. <laughs> like the figure itself is just terrible, but um, the box on its side, if you're putting that next to an AEW one, it's going to stand out. It's quite nice. I quite like the kind of baby blue anyway. So, um, still, I wonder where they got the idea from. I don't know. Um, I got some loose ones from Phil Rapley. So, Thanks for that, Phil. We got uh, Adam Page, um, Series 2, I believe. Um, we got a Series 5, Kenny Omega. Darby Allen from Series 3, complete with skateboard. Um, last yeah, don't year, value that. It and is. Darby Allen. Seven quid he charged you for that. Well, um, he's charged you... At least a third, no, fourth, a quarter of its value. Uh, I got a Hikaru Shida, who was, um, she's bloody lovely. The figure or the, the actual woman? Oh, the actual woman. Well, Vic Reeves myself. <laughs> You'll miss her because she's taking a break. Mm, shame. Here's a shame. Oh, well. Right. I'll move on to my fig pop shop. So fig pop shop do have, uh, if you spend £75, you get free delivery. So I kind of wanted to make that. I tried to add four mystery boxes, but they're limited to three. So I had to buy something else. <laughs> I had to buy something else. So I picked did, up the... Did they ship them separately? Sam Sorry, did they ship them separately out of interest? They're all in separate boxes. Uh, right. But it was in one, you know... Right, Okay. 
one yeah. Um So yeah, I picked up some of some Triple H because I didn't before. It was about 16 quid. Done the American packaging, if that makes any difference to anyone. I'm not sure if what the market is for, for that, but yeah. I know Big Pop Shop does sell these at a premium compared to the, the, the UK stock, but they didn't have any UK stock in, so I got it. Um, it's just as bad as we originally thought. The, the, you know, the, it doesn't shine. It's a bit lackluster, unfortunately. So I'm sure his eyes aren't painted right. Looks like flesh eyes. Never mind. That wasn't the important bit. So I've got three seal boxes here. As, as, as far as I'm aware, the Matt Hardy hasn't been found yet. Interesting. Have you, have you genuinely not opened these, though? Yeah, just I'll wait for the pod. Um, so I've got box 38, 36, and 19. Any in particular you want me to open first? Let's go 38. There's another one I always picked. This is intense. If you're listening, I'm sure you're on the edge of your seat. Pull over if you're driving. I'll be in some sort of bubble wrap as well, so I won't be able to show it. Maybe. Yeah, well, Steve did wrap it quite well. It's actually some decent um, bubble wrap. You, you sound shocked there, Jamie. Well, no, I know, but it's um, normally you sort of get a load of bump put in there, but it, was, it wasn't. It was quite nicely, nicely packaged. Right. First one out. Have a look. Do you want to tell you what it is rather than look at it? It um, is Ray Phoenix. Ooh. It's Ray Phoenix from Series 6. Decent figure. Yep. It is. Right, 36 or 19? Oh, no. oh, Adam. Oh, there we go. 36 is. Your, your age. Is it? <laughs> Should have at least opened the boxes before then. <laughs> is your age when we met? Right. Didn't learn me lesson from um, opening those replicas. Um, no, but then you got to give off the thing that you're opening it live, aren't you? So your surprise yeah. is going to be how a surprise. Oh, you never know. Guess what? I've got another rare phoenix. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not from the ashes. Is it the same theories as well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. At least that kind right. of sticks to the point where it was completely random, then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, right, last one is the number 19. And you, it's um... Ray Phoenix. <laughs> you feeling the hey, buzz? This is Ray. the one I wanted the most. That's, that's my birthday. Are you feeling the buzz? Are you uh, getting the rush on? Come on. In my Hardy Series 4, probably. The, the normal. Mm. Yeah, just to entice you in. Yeah, it's an interesting one, at least. Oh. I might want the people to see this one. Oh, he's done it. It's <laughs> the Matt Hardy <laughs> Chase. It is the Matt Hardy Chase. Oh, my God. Johnny oh, Flash Johnny has landed it. Jesus. How do you, how do you feel, Johnny? It's shocked. They didn't know what to say. I didn't expect it. So that's well, it's shaky. <laughs> and it was your birthday as well. What a day! Yeah, um, yeah, ninth, nineteenth. So and me and Jamie yeah. made sure you opened it last as well. Everything I, I was know, with the <laughs> gods. I would have thought you would have picked nineteen first. It was in in that. Nah, one sure. Order. Um, how does the figure look? Um, Terrible. it's not the best figure to be honest. It's just like a, you know, as good as the other my Hardy, but it's got that lovely sticker on, which makes it ten times the value. So, is it five hundred that one? Yeah, five hundred. It's the oh, okay. same series as the Cody. Seems that it's like the only figure that UK have had access to by the sounds of it, isn't it? So, yeah, I think because that Medco kicked up a fast in there about us not having. Chasing them, whatnot. Yeah, it's nice of them to put it in a protector as well. So, thanks for that. And <sighs> what a competition, I've got to say, even though you know I'm the winner, I guess 
it was just a very great way of um, sort of getting rid of getting rid of the wrong way to put it. But you know, no, it's, selling it's, this. It's not. Off. It's not, but it is at the same time. I know what you mean. Like no one's now. Yeah. No one's going to pick up a uh, let's say a series four figure. As I say, Shida. No one's going to pick up uh, a Shida around right now, are they? Because it's in Smiths, it's front of the shelves. So it makes sense. If you have a one in forty-five chance of getting a chase, uh, and the worst case scenario, you get a figure. It's a great yeah. idea. It's like it, you're not losing as such. You might, you know, a figure might have dropped to about fifteen quid or something. But what you're losing a fiver there, so it was worth a go. And I'm not usually one for gambling, really. It's not gambling if you're going to get something in the show or anyway. We'll yeah. come back. We'll come back in a year's time, and Johnny will be absolutely hooked. He'll be raffling his life away. No, that's not me. That is me. But um, yeah, that was um, exciting. Oh, we'll then, no. well, we can send Steve the video, can't we? And uh, Steve over at Fig Pop Shop, I'm sure we're delighted with that. He couldn't have asked yeah. for a better advertisement, could he? Have someone over just laughing for. It. Should be charging him for it. Um, yeah, you all out pick up slides. All out. All out. AEW all out. Um, brilliant. Well, let's uh, move to some retro review then, shall we? R E T R O. Retro review, boys. Now we're looking at all series 10 of the Hasbro figures. Um, almost, it's the penultimate. Penultimate? Penultimate? Adam, you're a teacher. Which one is it? Penultimate. Penultimate. Uh, serial episode uh, for the last of the Hasbro series. So, Johnny, let's come to you before I mess up my words even more. I was speaking of messing up. I didn't completely finish tallying up last last time the scores, so I can't really give you a full update of where they placed in the league, but <laughs> I'll, I'll try and get a, a league table up this, this week sometime, including Series 9 and 10, once we've we've gone through it. So let's just head on straight into Series 10. I want to do both the Bushwhackers at the same time because we, we've got eight to cover today, so let's get them both at once. So we've got, this is confusing, Butch and Luke. So they've been inverted since last time, so they've got different actions, and now they're in the tanned sort of colour outfits, and they've got an extra hat. I didn't even notice they're different actions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, so, yeah. it's almost like the head swap, but then obviously different colours as well. Repaint and head swap. Um, Any opinions at all? <laughs> yeah. My opinion, um, my opinion, first of all, would be just why. Just yeah. why. You know, it's not it's not what we want. It's not what we think of when we think bushwhackers. It's just it baffles me why this was needed. They're not a massively popular, big-selling character. I don't think they would be. It baffles me. I don't get it. Well, you got to think around this time would have been ninety-three, yeah, maybe late ninety-three, and the Bushwhackers weren't weren't massive around this time, were they at all? They maybe had the Survivor Series match with Doink and Mabel and stuff, didn't they, around this time? But. It was it almost seemed that they were a bit in and out at this around this time of period, or at least um, when hearing on big shows or anything. But I mean, the figures themselves. I mean, the, the original ones were solid enough. Um, they sort of did a job, didn't they? Uh, the repaint wasn't over needed. They're a lot harder to find. I didn't realise that this repaint actually come out until when I was an adult. I don't think I never saw it. But um, the yeah, all in all, solid enough. I mean, uh, seven for each for me. Oh, you're straight into the reviews, eh? Straight into it. There's nothing much to talk about, is there? Is, um, one, is one not better than the other, do you think? No, I, I not for me. I think they're both both on par, aren't they? I mean, I think there's a slight difference in the last one, but for me on this, just nothing. the hats are nice. I can't tell if I like this version better or not. It's it's a strange thing, because I think they've done quite well in the, in the decoration. They quite like the colours. So maybe for that reason, I think, yes, they are better. The hats are way too big. They've got no design, then inaccurate. So they almost don't add anything. If if anything, they might take away a little bit. But you know, maybe a point more than a score of the other bushwhackers, which I might go have a look and see what I did before Adam gives his verdict. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's just no need for them. I, I don't like these figures at all. I don't see any need for them. 
Uh, I will always favour the bushwhacker that does the proper motion rather than the one that lifts his leg up. Um, it, it annoys me the fact that I would love a Luke and a Butch both with that motion, but then you can't put this one with the other one because they'd look stupid together, <laughs> if you get what I mean. So I, I just don't like these figures. So I'd probably give Luke, in this case, a six, and Butch, in this case, a slightly higher 6.3. And you just say you didn't like that action? Oh, Butch, yeah. Butch is that one. Just yeah, so you're aware. Yeah. Around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting confused myself, if I'm honest. Um, I'm going to give Luke a 7 and a Butch a 7.1. I don't even know why. So you're with 6 and a 6.3, yeah. Um, do you want to read out as the uh, Legion Hasbro? Maybe not Clarks. Um, some people say that I should be more prepared for this and had the Legion of Hasbro retro review up. Well, I could um, I'll give us a, a summary of um, Clark's reviews of these figures. I give them both a two point five, and said, "What's the point?" And then he was even more disgusted when Jamie released Luke. Another day. <laughs> um, well, let's start with, let's go with Jay Moore. Um, he said, possibly on proper opinion here, but I don't really like the caps. I think they're oversized and clunky. The action is perfect wacker though. And that one is for one of the Butch fans for Butch. <laughs> yeah, that would do. Uh, we don't need any more. Now, but he's right. It's exactly what I said. And, yeah, it's, it's quite hard to score them again, isn't it? It's just who cares almost. Um, let's see if we care a little bit more about the head shrinkers. So we have Fatu and Samu. Which uh, I was making a lovely joke saying, cause I didn't know who he was, saying, oh, Sammy and all sorts. And Johnny only got me because I didn't know his name. Well, I wasn't sure what you were going for, to be honest. Um, one thing I will say on the Samu figure was that no one really wrote any comments. It was just merely a, a six, a six, a seven, uh, the occasional five point two. Um, so nothing really to report back on the uh, on the Samu figure. Um, Samu didn't get many comments or, or ratings. And can you blame him? Because um, I mean, look at it; it looks like a sweaty man, Whoopi Goldberg right. ghost. Um, Whereas Fatu got Patrick Ayres saying it was sound. You know, 7.7548. 7, 7. He said, the way I tell the head shrinkers apart is if you look at Samu's face, it doesn't look like Fatu, it means it's Samu. If it does look like Fatu, then it's Fatu. So there we go. Yeah, I love that. Uh, clear as mud. And he's got a good point because it does kind of look more like Fatu than it does Samu. I think it's Samu had a lighter skin tone, it would look more like Samu. But because of the both the same skin tone, it doesn't quite there because Samu was quite light in, in his skin tone compared to Fatu. Um Fatu looks a, a lot more like his twin brother. Um you know him as Tama from the Islanders. Looks a bit more like him than he does actual Fatu, but I suppose they're twins, so they're going to look like that anyway. So <laughs> maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. What are the tights like? Do they have designs? Or... Yeah, so they've got like a, a palm tree, and it's quite hard to say, but they do have he has Fatu written there, and Samuel has Samuel written on his. So that's that's quite good. And they've got decoration on the on the what would you call them? The ankles, opposite. Yeah. So. They're not exactly the same either. So, so if my method. memory serves me right, the head shrinkers, the, the splash off the top rope, Samu stood by the corner and released Fatu. I'm right, I know that. Yeah, I think so, yes. Fatu did the splash. So for me, Fatu's action is good. Samu's action is not. I don't see That's... why Samu needed to have that jumper action. I don't know. I sort of like I like the arms on on Samu to do the old action to spring so for, off. For figure photography, maybe, but for actual moves that he does and stuff like that, uh, is it needed? 
You can jump off Samu's back, though. Hey, look at mm. that. Mm. But he wouldn't. Thought, I never had these as kids because I, I don't think I've got anything past Series 7. Um, but yeah, that's, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, I, yeah, I, th- I think they both look like if I tried to wear skinny jeans. Um, that's what they both go out like, figure wise. I think that's great. I think the body wise makes sense. I'm quite a fan of these as jumpers, especially Fatu. I reason with you a bit, Adam. I think it, it might have had a different mold, maybe the gorilla press position for, for Fatu, but I think they'll cut in corners quite a lot at this point. So they can be relatively forgiven for it. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, they're all right. Those figures, Fatu's better than Samu. They've also got like different body types. So Fatu's got like a Kamala body, whereas um, Samu's got a must more slightly more muscular, but still quite broad. That um, is accurate. You're saying that um, Fatu's better than Samu. The Legion of Hasbro disagrees, but I think this might be down to how many votes one got compared to the other. Um, Fatu got. 6.22 and Samu got 6.55. Um, I do think there was a decent likeness, so I'm going to give Fatu a fat 7.3 and Samu a 6.5. So off in the middle of the two, I'm 7.2 for Fatu and 6.8 for Samu. Nice. Fatu was always my favourite as a kid. Uh, it's my favourite now, and it's generally the most valuable and things like that as well. Uh, they were never my favourite figures, but they're all right. Looking at them now, the likenesses are, are decent enough. Uh, Fatu's definitely better. 7.5 for Fatu, uh, and we'll go for a 7 for Samu. All righty. As we move swiftly on to Giant Gonzalez. Um, this figure eluded me as a child. This is one one of the figures that I always wanted. Uh, I wanted this one for ages since I was a kid, but I've never been able to find ever. Um, so yeah, it sort of a, holds a special place in my heart, and I can't wait to pick him up and then inevitably sell him a month later. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. So yeah, it's um, similar to the Ultimate Warrior or Skinner in terms of its body type and actions. I've got those dodgy feet. It's a bit bigger though, isn't it? Yeah, this is bigger. It's um taller. So they've done a good job with the scaling on this, which is nice to see. Could have a bit more detail on, on the torso, I think. And the but buttocks. I think it's quite fun in terms of like getting this figure out. It's not really one you'd see a lot. Likeness isn't quite there, but not too bad. Maybe a bit better than the Gloob. Yeah. I think the lightness is pretty good, to be honest. Uh, I think for the cartoony style, I think it's not it's not spot on, obviously, but I think it's pretty good. Yeah. It feels a bit more solid than the Ultimate Warrior. Do you remember when we were talking about the Ultimate Warrior and I thought it was quite flimsy and light? This one's a bit got a bit more weight to it, so maybe they've improved on, on the body style as well. So I do like the action a lot better on this one than I did Ultimate Warrior. What are LOH saying? The um, a bit of a mixed bag, really, because they started off quite hot and heavy. Um, to Finn World and give an eight point five because it's it's such a different figure compared to the others. And then you um had like Gavin gave it an eight and Wayne Peake gave an eight point three, and then just towards the end it just started to peter down. Clark put a seven point five in there and. You just starting to yeah, go down a little bit. What were the reasonings behind the low ones then? So Clark has put, he loves the size and likeness, but he could have done with painting and shading on the bodysuit. So similar to what we're saying, which I sort of agree with. I think if you look around the bum area in particular, he had quite a, a pert bum, but you know what I mean? They painted it on. Um, whereas in this, they just covered it up like Adam and Eve. Probably for the better, better to be honest. Yeah, but um, yeah. Not accurate. I agree. I, d- I don't mind too much, to be honest, on that. I think the fact that they've got the kind of um, the kind of fluff look with the way that they've done the mould is enough for me. Yeah. Um, and I think all in a way, it's just as I say, because it's so was well, quite sought after one in my life. I think it just holds that 
special place. And it's a good looking figure as well. Would, wouldn't look out of place in a Power Rangers toy line. Wouldn't look out of place in a He Man, for example. Um, so it just screams toy for me. Cool. Um, would you like to hit some scores, Jamie? Yeah. I'm going to give it an 8.5. And Adam. Uh, a bit higher for me. I absolutely loved this figure as a kid and I still really like it now. I think it's accurate enough. Uh, 8.9. And lower for me is 7.9. So Jamie's was right in the middle of, of us two. You bastard. Yeah, bastard. Um, but let's not get too down because it's time to party with Marty. Marty in his blue attire. Oh, Adam's even got this one. He came prepared. He never sold them like Jamie. Hey, not worth keeping. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, this this figure was, I think, I remember it quite vividly picking, I think, a couple of them as a kid. For some reason, like, we seem to see a lot more of Series 10 certain figures than we do others, and Marty was one that we seem to see a lot more of. Mm. Well, I didn't have any. I didn't have any of the other series ten. I remember rightly. I think I had Marty, like two or three of them. I didn't have any of the others when I was a kid. I think I agree with Jamie here. If I remember when I was a kid, I had a lot more opportunity to get Marty than a lot of the others. Fair enough. I wasn't really looking at that point in my life, so. Um, but yeah, Marty. Um, all in all, colour four tie. That's what we should have for the Rockers, but we didn't. Um, it's one that he has wore in the ring, so it makes sense. Head wise, it just kept the. Same rock ahead, if I'm not mistaken. Um, unpainted yeah. teeth, and um, just generally a very sad time in the face region. It is. I, I really, really like this figure. Like as you see it now, I'm holding it with its head covered. It, it's perfect from the head down, and then you get the head, and it really, really lets it down. Unfortunately, it's poorly done, and it's a shame because I, I love this version, of Marty Jannetty. As a singles, he should have had more life, but obviously we know he had some issues outside the ring, which prevented him from doing that. But amazing. I'm a big fan of Marty Gennetti, so I love the figure based on that. Yeah, pretty much the echoing the same statements. What a shame about the head on this one. Um, the thing that I actually really like about the trousers on this one is that they're dull. The rest of the figure is shiny. And the trousers are dull, but because they're so vibrant, it makes them stand out even more rather than just having a glaze on them uh, when they catch the light, uh, which I really like about this figure. Well, one of my favourite ever figures. Marty Jannetty was my favourite wrestler up until my teens. Uh, what a shame about the head. It is. Um, what's L.O.H. thinking, Jamie? Oh, L.O.H., um... Your bade has put, I need him for my collection and hasn't given a score. Um, Daniel Ahmed has put eight. I like this. It's a nice reuse of the body, great paint, and could have scored higher if they had just improved the head. Um, and to then, be fair, I, if I'm my way, I'd probably put this body on every single Hasbro figure. It's it's my favourite. Yeah, I'd say I'd say the perfect, Mr. Perfect Body is my favourite. I don't know what you mean. I think that one um, with the feet, you do a lot of moves, I think, can't you? Um, Rick Gia was put eight. Good gear choice. I like that they use Michael's body. Head could have been improved today. So it's usually quite echoed throughout that the um, that the body is a bit of a poo. It's, it's good, but the head's a bit poo. Yeah, so it is. Uh, I'll kick us off. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take away um, two points for the head, and I'll give it an eight. Oh, so it's a ten on the bo- on the body, is it? Yeah, I said body wise, we couldn't discuss it before. The body makes sense for a drop kick. Um, I'm not sure if Marty's finishing move was, but I'm sure whenever he did it, they'll never see him again. Um, and yeah, it was colourful enough. I can't take away a full two point. Uh, exactly the same reasoning, but I will give it an eight point five. Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't have given it a ten. Uh. Well, who knows? You can't say what ifs, but I'm, I'm going to give it 7.8 just because the head really, really lets it down badly. Let's move on to what is going to be controversial, certainly for me. It is Razor Ramon in his purple attire. Right. Preface. 
purple attire. Very, very purple. Too dark. Um, you can't see the gold. I know mine's used and open, but even on mint on card, I've seen that you can't see the gold. Right, there's one nitpick. Second, same, you can't see the logos, and the if you can't see them, they're too small on knee pads. On the back, the waistcoat should be black at the back and not purple. The arm pad should be purple and not black on one, one side of his arm. The face is decent. As we said before, the chains are quite good. This is not a 10 figure that a lot of people think it is. It's not the best Hasbro. It's not even close. I've made my case. I don't think it's controversial when you're backing up your opinion with facts. If they're getting yeah. incorrect attire, then, you know, there's, there's no argument against it. Yeah. I, um, I have brought up the um, Elite Razor Ramon just to contrast. I do think maybe when I've seen it now, the, the Mattel is a bit too light and maybe a bit edged toward the pink, so maybe this isn't accurate either. But if you look at the back of it and look at the back of that, you see what the difference is and how, how well it could have been done. And it's not it's not very well executed. It's got a good face. The the outline of it's good. It's got the waistcoat, the pants, and, and all that, but it's not very well decorated at all. Um yeah, I get what you said. Didn't they on the, the series uh seven? Didn't that have two tones on the coat? Wasn't it red and black? Um that was just all black. It was all just black. Or all, all black, yeah. Which wasn't accurate either because they usually no. have a different colour at the front. It should have been it, red, really, if it had red pants. Should have been, you know, red boots, red knee pads, etc. So that was even more mm. um, inaccurate. So it's probably a, an improvement, I would say. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of fans for this figure. Um, I think maybe, I, I think personally, the Series 7 one's better. Personally, I prefer the Series 7 one. But I think because this one... There's so much value attached to it. People tend to get a bit blinded by that as well. As we've seen with the Mail Away Hawken scores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just for information's sake, you both give this a nine series seven, just so you're aware of that. So that influences your yeah. scores. And... Um and we'll look at look at LOH first, just to just to go and reiterate what you were saying earlier. So there's a few tens in there. Steve Holwell put most visually stunning figure out of everything, in my opinion. The bad guy is unbeatable. Um, Himesh has put one of the best figures of the entire line. It would have been higher, but only Brett Series A gets a 10 from me. Um, one of the phase from the entire line, oozing machismo, says JJ. Um, yes, there's generally a lot of eight to nine, nothing lower than eight um, on there. So... Very big yeah. scores for the bad guy. The, the the real thing is, if you don't look too close, yeah, it's it's an amazing figure. When you go to pick it apart, you go to really, you know, review it properly. It's really not accurate at all. It's the same with the the Kane retro series too. People rate that very highly in, in the retro series, but it's decorations. There's no decoration on the bottom half of the the figure that people just overlook. Not looking properly, not reviewing it properly, not looking at all the aspects to it. When you've got a really good face as well, like this has, it kind of, that's the first thing you see and it kind yeah. of almost impairs the rest that you look at. And then you look that it's slightly more popping in the waistcoat variety compared to the last one. And again, you're on a winner and then it kind of stops looking at everything else of it. Hasbro can't do gold. On tyres, either as we've seen here, and on Macho King and, and T- countless others T-tone. that have had the goal. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I think as a as a figure, it is a decent figure. The accessory makes sense. The accessory is good. Uh, the accessory is good quality as well, which is quite rare to see from them. Um, so all in all, it's not a bad figure. It's just a bad. Um, it's just not overly accurate. Um, so for me, I'm going to give it. It's going to be less than Series 7 for me. I'm going to give it an 8.7. Uh, I've taken your points into account, Johnny, but yeah, 8.7 for me. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's not good. Slightly lower from me, uh, 
Oh, well, I thought I was being harsh because I do think it's a little bit better than the Series 7, just on accuracy points, but I'm going to give it only a point one more, and it's 8.1. Um, You will be glad to know that LOH scored this the most out of any other figure, and it was a straight 9.5 overall <laughs> average. I'll just double-check that because it's an all up now. Yep. Definitely the highest or they've given to any figure. Well, it's got to be. There's been no one hooing on it, so... No one's really looking at the figures properly, are they? No, it's <laughs> that, that as well. Let's insult the audience. <laughs> but we're not that sort of podcast. No. Yes. So, let's move on to the final one of the series then, shall we? If I can find my place again. I'll get there eventually. It is Shawn Michaels. Um, HBK version 2, black tights, black boots, black gloves, uh, with a silver shades and deco up. Um, let's cut across to Valor H on this one, and let's cut across to Joey Knight. Um, second mentioned for him. Um, he's put magnificent, all the flashbacks of me crossing the border from Canada to the super flea flea market in Buffalo, New York, to wheel and deal at local scalpers for this beauty that I have to this very day. Good times, beautiful figure too. Totally encompasses uh, what Hasbro were all about. Not at all accurate, but yet so detailed. A 9.1. Nice review, Joy. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the Series 7, Shawn Michaels is, is my favourite. Hasbro is up there with one of my favourites anyway. This I never really cared about. Never really, it's just sort of it doesn't bore me, but it's not as poppy as the series seven for me. Yeah, um, I agree completely. I think the thing that's maybe wrong with it is there's no decoration on the boots. Oh, sorry, there's not enough. Even I'm sure he never wore black boots at this point. But I could be wrong, or at least they looked less black when he wore them. They might have had more designs on them or something. And it just doesn't look right for some reason, and I can't figure out why. My opinion is a bit like meh. Um, it's not something I associate with Shawn Michaels. The white one, the white tights are what I associate with Shawn Michaels. This one, I think the silver shades don't have enough impact. I think they almost blend into the face. Uh, I don't. I don't know how they could have improved that, but maybe a slightly darker, maybe a rim on the glasses, just something to bring them out of the face a little bit. Um, but it's a very meh figure for me compared to the other. The other's amazing. I do think it's got some good design. I think the pants are quite well done. Could maybe done with some writing on the back. But the, they've got, like, white squiggly lines in, in the middle of the of the silver, so that's quite good. So I'll give it a couple of extra marks for that. Yeah, it's a strange one. It's not as good as Series 7. No one here. I think it's near, but not too near. I'm going to go for 8.8. I think it's quite good, though. Yeah, I think as a Sean Michaels figure, it's, it's decent. Um, I'm going to give it a straight nine. Um, I'm going to go ridiculously low, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't anticipate your scores being that high at all. I thought I'd be lower than you, but I didn't think I'd be that lower than you. Uh, it's a 7.5. You bastard. No, There's no appeal to me whatsoever. It's fair, I guess. It's not like it's a ridiculously low score. It's still way above average, you'd say, so fair enough. And and that's it. That's Series 10 in the box. Next up, we've got the famous Series 11 next week. Um so there should be uh, yeah, some, some interesting scores for the next one, shouldn't there? But uh, try not to cry too much when you're leaving your scores of being the last one for the Hasbro series. Final episode. Mm. Of oh, Retro Review, we'll probably come back after. We've reached the end of what child Adam had in his collection as well. I didn't what? have any of the next series. What child? Oh, what? Well, <laughs> I was going to say, what child did you have in your collection? You shouldn't be ch collecting children, Adam. Not now, not ever. Um, right, cool, yes. Let's break it down then, shall we? Let's do it. Break it down. So 
The Rumble 2002. Interesting in fact, this was the first ever DVD I owned of wrestling. Uh, it was around the same sort of era for me. Picked up from Woolworths, and I think it was about 18 quid of my birthday money when I was 12. So, interesting in fact, had by all. Um, at the time, boys, this is what, 2002. Where are you both in your in your wrestling lives, Adam? Uh, I was at university in 2002, um, so kind of phased out I think it was my second year of uni so I didn't really see much of the day and then just went out so I didn't see wrestling to be honest so I had to catch up on this afterwards I think Bradford were in the Premier League when this was on weren't they? <laughs> they were indeed <laughs> Johnny Yeah I was um, I was in a time where I've been telling you before when we were watching like Survivor Series 2001 I'd moved to Norway at that point at this point I'd moved back to England because I, I was in the final year at school so I needed to do GCSEs and I was meant to do them in Norway but it didn't happen so I was back and forward all the time between countries um, so when I got back to England I had no access to watch wrestling at all so I just kind of drifted away from it never seen it at the time but I did end up getting the VHS a couple of years later so I did watch this one a few times back when I was um, a teenager. Um, it's, quite, it's quite an iconic um, front cover, looking back at it. Um, didn't seem like much at the time, but I know by looking at it, what Rumble it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, star studded Rumble event. We'll skip over the sort of pre-card, um, just because they were the big one, really. Um, Spike and Taz be the Duddy Boys, for some reason. Um, Taz Mission locked into Devon, which was quite... It's quite a fun match, really. Um, Regal right. beat it. Yeah, it was all right. Regal beat Edge, which, um, yeah, good match at the time. We won the IC title with it. Um, Trish beat Jazz. Uh, once again, Jazz has slipped down the card after two months <laughs> after a damp screw of a debut. Um, Flair versus McMahon in a bloodbath of a match <laughs> between two very old men, um, which was interesting to see. Uh, and Jericho be the rock to retain the undisputed title. And you're up to speed. Brings you up to the, the Rumble match itself, which I said is a star-studded event, uh, all in all. Uh, JR and the King called the action, which I was very happy about. It sort of takes you back, doesn't it? JR's voice, even now, takes you back to the glory days of wrestling, isn't it? Was that the first uh, one that Lawler was back for then? I can't remember. When um, he was, or was he Armageddon or Vengeance? What Vengeance was it? Was he at that one? It would have been because Heyman wasn't wasn't there for Vengeance, was he? Yeah, sounds about right. Probably brought him back the day after the WWF won. I'm, I'm guessing then booted Heyman from commentary. Yeah, I'd imagine so. If the uh, the old cap fits, I guess. But. Um, yeah, I was quite happy. I'm a big fan of Jerry Lawler, and uh, especially around this sort of era when uh, when it was fine for him to be as weird as he uh, as he is nowadays. Nowadays, it's just I creepy. Gonna, I was going to say the opposite. I was going to say it really showed off how rubbish commentary was at the time because literally all Jerry Lawler did was just talk about the women, and for me, that that didn't catch my didn't didn't get me excited about the commentary at the time. And now I look back and it's even more cringy now. Yeah, I mean, it's worse now to look back here with a 2022 eye. But being 12 years old, you're like, yeah, Tory Wilson is fit. Yeah, that sort of <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, anyway, we're boring, Johnny. Uh, let's start with Rikishi and Goldust kicked us off, which um, I was quite happy with, truth be told, because I quite like a nice little gimmick. Both good workers, both have a good history. Uh, former IC title, or IC champions. Um, my favourite thing about the start of this rumble, which we'll come to in a second, but it's very Attitude Era heavy, like the, the leftover dregs, should we say, of the Attitude Era, which I quite liked about it. It's quite a nice little motion through to it. But uh, we discussed the Bulldog and uh, Ted DiBiase being left last time. Rikishi and Goldust, number one and number two. Do you guys, are you a fan of this as the entrance in, Johnny? Um, decent people to start it. What I noticed about almost you know, this rumble as a whole, is that it seemed like it'd be a transition period between that invasion angle to what was be became the, the ruthless aggression era or whatever, you know. So this is where Goldust has come back, Rakesh has come back, Valvinus, etc., etc. They're all 
coming back, they weren't involved during the whole invasion. So a lot of people were either coming back or, or debuting at this point. So it was interesting to see those guys again. I don't understand why they advertised everyone that was coming back ahead of time. It would have been a much better, you know, if they kept Mr. Perfect, for instance, as a secret to, to come back and, and re-debut. But that's the way they, they went into it. They advertised them ahead of time. And, and there you are. We're off to the, off the races on this one. Yeah, yeah I, would feel, I would feel a bit gutted if I was Rikishi here because coming out number one in the Rumble normally creates quite a lot of buzz, quite a lot of crowd, atmosphere. I think it was completely dead when Rikishi came out, like completely dead. Uh, the only time the crowd started was when Goldust came out. Uh, so, yeah, it was it's kind of the start, this one, of the mid-card 20 um, with mm. this Rumble. <laughs> you know, there's only one decent person who stands any chance in the first 20. So to start off with a couple of mid-carders who one of them wasn't going to get thrown out immediately, it was a good start for me. Who'd have thought he'd still be wrestling 20 years later? Um, and Bossman come in third, which, once again, as you said, he wasn't featured that much or at all during the invasion. Um, and then Judge randomly popped up here, which was um, yeah, very strange to... To see him in there, there's a lot of faces where I sort of went, "Oh, was he? Was he still there then?" Like a lot of, because yeah. he did, he died about a year after, I think. Boss man, didn't he? It wasn't wasn't too. Two thousand four, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it wasn't too long after, was it? Um, and Bradshaw come in next, who had a very well, wasn't an overly long stay, but uh, Bradshaw, Lance, Storm, and Lance, Al Snow all come in one after the other, and the whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> You're going a bit too fast now, um, Bradshaw. Oh. I, I thought we'll, we'll mention him. I, for some reason, people seem to really love him. Like the the crowd loved Bradshaw. He had a, a really good shine when he came in at the match. Um, really good baby face at this point. Everyone seemed to really support him, which is quite surprising because I never had made him really care or, or like him, but the crowd did. Yeah, well, once again, with these two, Bossman didn't really get any reaction, um, and he was from those parts, wasn't he? Um, which was a bit Georgia. disappointing. Yeah, um, and then Bradshaw got a really good reaction. This was just before his kind of hardcore title type of brand split type of run, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, he was he was quite big during this time. And nothing really happened until this point, and then the, the stink face... The very elongated stink face on Big Bossman happened, which was really weird for me because Rikishi was coming across as a heel, and then that happened, and it was almost really, really baby facey. Uh, no, which was Rikishi is a baby point. face. I, I know, but he was coming across as a heel during the match. He didn't get any reaction. He had a miserable look on when he was walking out. He didn't. He didn't act like a baby face, and then all of a sudden that happened. Yeah, so it was a bit strange for me. Right. Uh, uh, that, that stink face, yeah. Sorry, I mean, um, you could tell that it went on for a, a long time. I think the boss man was even like, Come on, get off. <laughs> he made a noise anyway to like sort of aggressively signal to and that's they, enough. Uh, and they say wrestling's fake. How can you fake that? Right? Um, <laughs> non Storm come out next to um, Jerry Lawler saying, Can't be serious for a minute a couple of times, which. It's funny when Lance Storm does it, but we just say his catchphrase it doesn't mean that you're funny, Jerry. To that note, um, yeah, Boss Man was eliminated just before that as well. Mm, yeah, a big run. Boss Man was the first one out. Um, Lance Storm's the second one out, funny enough. Um, yeah, Al Snow coming next. Quite a big pop for Al as well. Um, yeah, I thought it was quite surprising. I think um, he got over quite well with the tough enough. If, um, seen his real personality, his real side, and people liked him, and he really did. He come across really well on that show. Um, I tell you what, still to this day, comes across well as Billy Gunn's theme song. Um, the one, Billy Gunn. Yeah. Absolute banger, that is. We used it for the WrestleBox one last year, didn't we, Adam? So to listen to the first 10 seconds of that on loop whilst I was doing your editing, um, which... Annoyed me a bit <laughs> towards the end, but um, really, yeah, reminded me here of how much of a banger that tune is. Typical JR in commentary here, just completely forgetting that the character had changed. Yeah, uh, calling, calling him the one Billy Gun, and then Jerry Lawler had to completely 
like cut him off and go, hey, well, it's just Billy. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it was character change. I don't think JR was aware at all of it. No. Yeah. It was striking pink pants. Um, it was lovely. Uh, Taker. Taker was out next and just cleared the ring completely, didn't he? Just threw everyone out as much as possible. Um, which, yeah, it was quite good to have this, uh, this early on, especially when that initial gong hit and then was it rolling was the theme song yeah it was quite clear on the network as well I, I thought they took it off but, well they yeah. did for a while they had um, do you know one that's like it's the similar one but it's just like a guitar riff um, they had that for a while just dubbed over all of the rolling ones and all of a sudden they just started playing rolling again so if they just paid the license strange mm. but he did yeah. well and then, um, yeah, then the, the Hardys came out and that's a nice little mini feud in there as well. This sums up completely why Matt Hardy is the better Hardy boy. Um, the way he acted, the facial expressions, the timing of uh, coming out and then starting his run, uh, getting a little bit of aggression on The Undertaker, but then taking all the hits. Matt Hardy is the better Hardy boy by a mile and this rumble showed it. Maybe it was at this point, but overall, no. I'm just not having that. <laughs> um, I like Matt Hardy's punches. It doesn't sound weird, but he throws a good, like a unique punch. Um, he throws it. He stands like quite far away from them and leans forward and does his punching from there, which you can always, you can always tell us a Matt Hardy punch. Um, so anyway, those two got thrown out uh, with Lita getting pushed about like like little Mo from EastEnders. Um yeah, so those two <laughs> eat your dinner. Was that the storyline at the time, was it? No, I think that was a bit. I don't know why before. Would have just been before. I think it was two thousand and one for Trevor and Little Mo, wasn't it? With a no, chain, well. a chain roast that dinner. Was, that, that was a perfect analogy, then, wasn't it? There we go. Eat your dinner more. Um, yeah, so those two have thrown out, and then um, Maven come out once again. It was a relatively big pop for Maven. Um, it was quite a bland-looking school teacher with a lot of eyebrows. Um, Can I cut in there? You can cut all well, the do you want. You are completely wrong, though. Oh. There was no pop or crowd reaction at all for Maven. This is one of the moments where WWE absolutely nailed what they did. This is one of the most iconic Rumble moments for me. Uh, the fact that Maven got no reaction, nothing, and then everyone knew who Maven was as soon as the action happened. Can I stop you? You can. We, we all watch this on the network, right? Mm. With the network, it doesn't have the music that Maven used to go at the ring. Apparently, the pop was really, really good for it. Uh... But because it's being re-edited, it didn't come across that way on, on the screen. So I remember it being a huge pop when you came out when I watched it on the VHS and it, and it was talked about, I was listening to a podcast um, with Bruce Pritchard and they were talking about how big the pop was. So that's how well, I knew. I'll rewind, I'll rewind then, but okay. WWE still did this moment brilliantly. They, yeah. They, they, they edited it, it to, to be brilliant. Um, <laughs> they didn't edit it wrong. They, they ruined it on the network. Hmm. Well, no, I think it does play into what Adam was saying that um, if you're just watching it back now, you sort of go, Oh, he's, this, is, this is nobody. And then what he did. Yeah. Him, to be fair, yeah. though, Taker um, did a really good job of going on the top rope. It looked, it looked generally painful, like it was a genuine mistake, and he actually got eliminated. Whereas sometimes they get hit and they just stumble over, which we'll come to later on. Um, yeah, I thought it, was a, it looked like there was a bit of force behind it. Johnny, shaking your head. I'm just thinking you, you, you may be confusing realism for. Undertaker not really knowing how to do that bump properly and making it look quite sloppy. Yeah, it looked, yeah it looked, it really, it you know, what do you mean? So he's never really took the over the top very well. No, but, um, I think it made sense. If it was a smaller guy, then I think it would have been a bit clunky. But, but yeah, beautiful draw kick. And to be honest, him getting beat up by Undertaker right after kind of made it. Made may even get over even more as well, so it made him mm. famous. Is that what Undertaker was saying at the time? I'll, I'll make you famous, and, and he certainly did. Um, the chair shot though, that was 
followed by the more sloppy camera work to Shaw Bladen in the mm. world. Um, they proper focused on Undertaker, um, proper down blading him, and then putting the blade back in his uh, in his tights. Uh, they didn't take the camera off it at all. It was very strange to watch that. I never looked for things like that, so I never really noticed them. Um, yeah. Well, now I know. The magic. Um, apparently also, Taker was supposed to throw over the top rope earlier, but threw him through the middle rope, or maybe even went through the middle rope, and then he had to throw him back in and then throw him back out again. Um, which goes to show what happens when it's one of your first matches, I guess. I think it worked out better that way, to be honest. Um, what was perfect was Scotty Too Holly's entrance. <laughs> um just sort of come in, just toddling along, doing a stupid little dance, and then just gets a gets a beating for it. Um, Almost perfect. He didn't get a beating. He got hit once and was down for ages. Yeah, but it was still. He could have hit him a little bit more, or at least give him like a boot or something. But well, we saw what happened when Test hit him a couple of times, and he was out for the whole thing. Yeah. The Survivor Series. Maybe it's a bit of a story. Didn't have much luck in Rumbles. I remember the 2001, he entered and Undertaker and Kane were in the ring waiting yeah. for him. It came about quite sheepish. Uh, oh, that's good. Um, Christian come in next. Um, once again, for his, 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 his banging soundtrack play. I can't remember. Yeah, um, yeah. At last, he's on his own. Yeah. Last one. Um, but yeah, Christian came in to sort of, it was a bit. Of, in obscurity at this time, I would have thought, but um, he came in with a sort of mixture of uh, in a sort of blonde haired cluster, should we say, in the middle of the rumble. Yeah, um, he was followed by DDP, who we discussed how far he had fallen down the card in Survivor Series, and uh, relatively similar in this one, I'd say. On the, um, a European title for you, yeah, yeah, that's very, very blonde, it's very good one. Um, Chuck was in next to um, if there's anyone that d- doesn't suit wearing wearing smaller trunks Chuck Palumbo is, is that guy he just looked very uncomfortable with his hair and his trunks I'd say sorry but it's not it's not Chuck it's Chucky oh, yeah. GR was saying over and over again in a distasteful <laughs> disgusted way Chucky Chucky that was just annoying I think he still does it with um Chuck Taylor. Uh, what was your disagreeing about, Adam? Uh, I think he fit that mould perfectly. I think him and Billy um, looked great. And uh, just, I mean, he, he's not good on the mic, is he, Palumbo? Um, but other than mic work, I think he really worked his character well. Yeah, I think they gimmick... looked so good to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think the gimmick, the gimmick worked well. I like the tag team. It's just I think he looked uncomfortable when those... In this um, pants, pretty much always wore like well in that era trunks. Didn't he? But... It looked better in the two thousand eight run where he had the, the biker stuff on it fitted his body. Oh, I remember that. He had a feud with um, Jamie Noble, I think. Jamie Wills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, Gregory Helms. They get a feud with at one point as well. Um, Russ, the Godfather was in next, which is probably my favourite bit of the Rumble, where he just kept what? bringing. It was so fun, just bringing in, bringing in the hose, uh, one after the other. Uh, it went on for, I'd say, it was definitely longer than two minutes. But um, dreadful dancing, it's like an old man coming out with like. It, it was that's what it was, and it was the oh, time man. I had by all. Um, oh. It was good. It was good pop when he came forever. out. And DDP got eliminated during this stupid entrance, so he didn't even get to see that. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was just a waste of time. Um, Albert was next. Yeah, no hose for Albert. He didn't come up with any. No, I, this was the worst entrance at all for me because I heard that music. I'm thinking, oh, here comes Grandmaster Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Albert. <laughs> the hip hop hippo. The, the most forgettable tag team run of all time. I'd what? even wrote down here on my list Brian Chris and then crossed yeah. it out uh-huh. and put Alba. <laughs> did, um, did they win the tag titles? Everyone won the tag titles back then. Even Spike and Taz, as you've seen. <laughs> Scotty and Albert didn't, I don't think. Well, Scotty and Rikisha won at Mania, didn't they? Yeah, Scotty and Rikisha won a couple of times. 
Yeah. But even so, it only lasted 45 seconds, uh, Albert, which for someone of his size, and, and let's put it this way, so he's relatively skilled. Like his bicycle Very kick. Very good is, 45 seconds. Yeah. Uh, is it a great bicycle kick? What do you mean he's, he's dancing? <laughs> I just like his um, his shouting he used to do before he did his moves. It was quite good. But, um, Can I just comment comment here about one of the best tag teams to have ever been in a Royal Rumble here? Um, Christian and Chuck Palumbo. Together, they eliminated three people. Have any other tag team done that? <laughs> oh, they've got, they've, they've both got GDP out, they both got Albert out, and they both got Godfather out on okay. purpose in both trying. According to Wiki, only Christian had a mate at DDP. No, it's wrong. Well, we I'll didn't see it. Take it up with the big <laughs> mix. <laughs> um, yeah, he replayed it. I did that. I yeah. missed it. Perry Saturn came out next. Looking, it did look in really good shape, Perry Saturn. I've seen pictures of him recently. Uh, not so much. But he, um, yeah, he was in very good shape. It's Perry. Um, come in, did some really good suplexes. I thought it quite like a good little live wire. I was, yeah. I was shocked when I, when I rewatched this that he was in it. Um, I thought that he'd really petered out and he wouldn't have been a feature in the Rumble. Um, but like you say, he had a, he actually had a really good impact on this Rumble. And his attire was brilliant. I'm surprised mm. they never made a figure of that. If there's anyone that's ever underachieved in WWE, that would be Perry Saturn. He, he came in so with so much sort of, you know, grandeur and then... As you say, petered out, never went anywhere, and he was never seen again once he left WWE. Um, I quite liked his suplex style as well. He did the jump into the suplex, I thought that was quite good. Um, he was sort of and it was more of a brain bustery suplex sort of thing, wasn't it? It's quite good. I liked it. So, just to reiterate, we're 18 people down here, and there's 18, only, Undertaker, only Undertaker that could have ever had a relative chance, a proper mid card rumble, uh, or Maven potentially. It's certainly um, bottom heavy, if you're going to call it that way, or top heavy. Oh, let's way. bring on some stars, shall we? Because Stone Cold Steve Austin come in next, which um, I remember also, I think he won three Rumbles by this point. Um, should have potentially won a fourth of 99 Rumble, but yeah, the star power of Stone Cold Steve Austin was brilliant in this. I think he was great. He played a really good part in it to sort of throw out the mid-carders and then bring them back in and Started him and get, really got the crowd up and running and um, kicked the rumble into next gear. I think this did. Yep. Um, good evidence. And that's exactly what someone like him should be doing just kicking us and eliminating everyone in the ring. Twice. Well, the, the second iconic moment in this rumble is him sat on the turnbuckle looking at no watch. Brilliant. Mm. Um, this is probably one of those sort of fun Austin runs, wasn't it? Where he's just the what catchphrase got over and um, just him as a person just changed his character a little bit and really got over. Um, Malvina's coming next and just got absolutely just stomped a mud hole in, didn't he? Um, which was, he took it really well. I thought it was quite a good little moment of him getting stomped into the corner quite well. Um, but yeah, as you said earlier, it was quite a weird attitude error. Val Venus, because this is just before or just after he turned into Chief Morley. Just before. before just before. Come back. That's it. Um, yeah, I think, I think Chief Morley was like end of 2003, I think. Yeah, it was terrible either way. Early um, he in this rumble. Yeah. Um, and so the test, who Lando was in next, and has a very good boot boo again. Uh, I think he was aiming for Austin and missed and hit Venus with it. But, um, yeah, I've always been a big fan of Test Big Boot and, yeah, did a really good job in that one. Another and then one they both went out. <laughs> uh, yeah, Test, another one prime for big things and never quite really made it, unfortunately. Um, and then, yeah, just Triple H hit and massive pop. His first match back from his injury and just looked a million, million dollars, as they say. He was really good. There. Go on, it wasn't his first match back. The um, I think they put him on a SmackDown. I can't remember who it was against now, but they put him on SmackDown for some reason rather than having his debut re debut. Oh, because it's because it's not now. Now they would wait until the pay per view, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, 
I think they wanted to get you know get the ratings on SmackDown or whatever, but there's still maybe a daft call. Was it maybe I don't know. Big return, but he's already done it on SmackDown. Stupidly long entrance <laughs> for a rumble, yeah. Um, and then both of them, I thought they were both going to collide and go down as the hurricane come out, but I think they did it after the hurricane music hit um, with Austin and Triple H. Uh, but yeah, hurricane come down, and then let's see, just the rest is history. Try the double choke slam, I think, on them, and then just um, just got torn apart, didn't he? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yep. Perfect perfect moment for a comedy interval. The old two man power trip. Um Fruit come out next to um I thought Fruit was well placed in this. Um he's never gonna win it, but at the same time he's, he's quite a big name to throw out, isn't he? So um lasted a full thirty six seconds. Not a big name, not a big deal, not a big impact. I'm pretty sure I'm sh- like any Royal Rumbles I've seen through guys in the last long time. He probably just says, I'm going to go out for 30 seconds. I'm not doing any more. Just get me out straight away. I'm coming back and I'm going to have a beer. Um, on the contrary, I think the 98 Rumble I think it lasted quite long. Fine. I'll give you 98. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was in the final three with uh, the Rock and Austin. Um, and then Mr. Perfect was out next. He, he touched on it earlier. I think they should have... That was a nice big entrance for a return to come back and even got a, a run after this as well, didn't he? So I wouldn't call it a run. A run to being released just after WrestleMania. Um yeah. but yeah he lasted a good 15 minutes in the match, which is it's quite surprising. And then it is the, quite surprising because he, he did look really strong, you know, getting to the final three and then they never done anything with him afterwards. It was surprising. He he didn't look in the best shape, if we're being honest. Compared yeah, but, to like the other people that debuted and stuff like Venus and stuff stacked, Godfather for his eyes stacked. So that again, the audience don't know that, or they wouldn't really care. So, <laughs> um, yeah, the star studded then come in. Just Kurt Angle was in next, and um, I think they come back here. I think we'd love to have, have Angle to have won this round. More, truth be told, it would have been a good winner where he was in his career at that point but yeah I thought it was he came in did a good showing good German suplexes and just good all round performer I just love Kurt Angle back then part of his game certainly was um, and then I'll tell you was on top of his game was Big Show who were uh, just a typical Big Show rumble appearance really wasn't he just come out did a few choke slam looked very clunky there's a few miscommunications when he came out uh, no one really knew what he was going for and yeah looked very clunky I don't like Big Show with short hair rather strange look yeah a lot more sweaty back then didn't he um, and Kane was out next because you can't have Big Show out without having a fellow big man shortly after or shortly before can you um, and yeah Kane lobbed him out and then very shortly after got lobbed out by Kurt Angle um, yeah, I was quite surprised Kane didn't get more of a showing based upon him being like the record el- eliminations and stuff. It was about, like, around this point, a lot of the bigger names just got tossed out left front because RVD came in there. By the way, by this point, I was frustrated because I didn't know what number people were. Like nowadays, we have on the screen saying number 15, number 16. I had no clue what was going on. I didn't know what number was what. It wasn't until RVD came out at 29, and I think JR said he picked a good number at 29. I was like, oh, just 29. But I had no idea who was coming out last. I think that's what makes sense now when I look back at it around this sort of time when people would win a battle royal to come in 30th. So people know in the arena when number 30 has been, so it's over. That makes sense. Yeah, I felt the same as well at that point. I didn't know what number we were at. I- was wondering if RBD was actually number 30, but he, he turned out not to be. I didn't hear the call by GR either, so I was still really confused of who else was coming until they did say this is number 30 and Booker T came out. Um, yeah, I think Booker T was actually quite good in um, in this run. We didn't last very long, but until RBD did the frog splash as soon as he came out, didn't have time to recover. Triple H pedigreed him and he was down for a good couple of minutes after that. And, Lobbed out, and I think Booker T did a spear Rooney and just 
And as he was at this point in his career, a bit of a comedy character, I think, got a stunner and just toppled over the ropes in the most unrealistic way <laughs> humanly possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, crowd reaction for IVD going over the top rope was obviously really dismal. Um, I think it was a little bit too long uh, between him going down in the move mm. and then him getting chucked out. Just made him look really weak. Uh, and like you say, Booker was too comical. It kind of sums up his weird, like, actual real-life persona uh, in this rumble. Tell me, you can just say that. Um, but yeah, I think it's just very strange. It comes down to the final four, and yeah, a decent final four. Triple H, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Angle and Austin. Um, I said three out of the four of them you could see winning. Um, so Austin got tossed out first. Out of the four of them, which I was yeah, surprised at, as you said, John Eddie joining them, Mr. Perfect made the final three. Um, like you say, it was to make uh, Angle look strong because he was yeah. at the top of his game um, and he wasn't going to win it. So it made him look really strong getting Austin out. So I agreed with that. Definitely. And um, one of my favourite things, it was the sort of homage back to the 90, 95 Rumble where. Triple H went over the ropes and Angle was celebrating, thinking he'd won it. Listen, Triple H then just pulverised him. Which was quite good. Um, Kurt Angle does go over the rope a lot better than a lot of other people. He always throws us all into it. Every elimination he seems to get in the rumble, he seems to make it look like it hurts. Well, oh, you realise what he's doing there, don't you? Yeah. Well, he can't go over backwards. So he's turned his whole body and going over forwards. Oh, because his neck. Oh. No, he just can't do it. He, uh, I listened to a podcast and he was, he said, I just can't take the bump backwards. I can't do it. And to be honest, I've tried it before. It it It's quite daunting, scary to go over backwards. But if you do it, yeah, if you don't, we, we were right. talking about it at training, weren't we, when um, some of you guys were training for that battle royal. Um, and thinking about how you go over, and that was one of the things that was mentioned by our trainer, was um, it doesn't matter kind of how you go over. If you can't do it one way, just do it a different way, and that's what Angle does. He turns at the very last minute, so he tumbles over forwards. Uh, I, I, I like it. Yeah, it was really good. Mm. It's different. different. Um, but yeah, Triple H won. Big celebration. Um, everyone was not a dry eye in the house, I imagine, when we uh, went on through it. But, um, yeah. Rightful winner? I suppose so. I mean, it made sense. He just made that comeback. Apparently, it was a big deal. I still don't really get why it was such a big deal. Um, you know, him come back Madison Square Garden and stuff. But it is known as one of the bigger moments in WWE. I don't think I feel as strongly as you do about this rumble. Uh, it's neither here nor there for me. It's not iconic or anything, but... Of course, we've humoured you by letting you pick the topic today, Jamie. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. But yeah, I, th- I think it's because it's like if you look at everyone, there's everyone, um, apart from obviously Rock and Jericho, but um, they're all just crammed into this rumble. I don't even mean obviously the first 19 people isn't star studded, but I think everyone had their moments in it, um, apart from the likes of Albert and stuff that only got 30 seconds. But um, I think, yeah, it was the last little stretch should we say where people just stars were coming left right and centre and being dumped over as a kid I loved all that sort of crap so it's it's a nicely put together rumble it's definitely nowhere near one of my favourite rumbles um, but it's also not my least favourite I'm very surprised you haven't called it the B&M rumble yet uh, with the logo being exactly the same as the B&M shops <laughs> I didn't notice that um I wouldn't have made the link, truth be told, because BM didn't exist when I was a kid. It does now, Jamie. It does, but I, I you, I'm looking at the logo now and I can't see what you mean. It's the orange and the and the like different segments. Orange and blue. Oh. I don't see it. You're there's wrong. No, there's no blue on it. It's just orange and sort of darker orange, I guess. Shush. What a way to end. <laughs> Bargains and madness. Um, but yeah, all in all, happy Rumble. Um, Triple H got a figure made out of his uh, comeback, so it's a bit more iconic than um, needed as well. So yeah, decent figure, decent Rumble, and a decent time had by all. Decent. 
Johnny, thanks oh. for your time on the episode. You got your chase figure. I did. I had a good time, and certainly that was the highlight of this episode for me. <laughs> I won't ask you what your highlight was, Adam. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's many. Danny Birch side by. There we go. Lovely. Perfect. All right, well, so thanks for your time. We'll be back in a couple of weeks again, and um, hopefully we'll be in a better position on the FWL, and we'll see you soon.